I shall call him Nagador Maximal. See, here's hoping we don't lose this one too. <laughs> Checking systems. After catching Nogs and Pokeballs so that we could turn them into small luchadors, again, probably better you do not ask. I battled a Elvis cosplayer, I guess? Who was way below my level at this point, before moving on to our next destination. Back on Sanctuary, we got a communication from Maya saying that her world of Athenus was under attack. And so, that's where we're headed. Road trip! Athenus features a lovely landscape and an even lovelier monastery, which would have been even better if it weren't being infested with these Malawan soldiers. I'm not a particularly religious man, but I did feel honor-bound to try and help these folks. That and the game told me to. It wasn't long before we could finally meet up with Maya. It's good to see that Maya is alive and well, seems to be doing well for herself, keeping in shape, Kicking people is good cardio. A few annoying grill masters later, and some beautiful sticky bombs, Step thank you, Mr. Wrong, Torg. Chick. And we were off to avoid the main quest so we could go to this brewery and start a side mission. I opened a perfectly normal refrigerator, at which point a ratch came out of it, not sure how we fit in there to begin with, and set about a glorious extermination mission. This is as close to the Rats in a Cellar mission that you get in any RPG that you could ask for, at least in terms of Borderlands. I leveled up to 17 while I was down here, and then soon after I finished this mission, I leveled up again to 18. In fact, it happened so fast, I think I kind of forgot that I had leveled up twice. No kidding, it was about like three minutes after I left the brewery, and I dinged again. So that was unexpected. I'll chalk it up to a perfect storm of challenges completing at the same time. There was a boss battle with a guy whose name I don't remember. Carl? We'll call him Carl. I gave Maya the very important Iridium that she needed. I've never been able to use Iridium the way Lilith does, but I found a technique in this book that might change that. And tried to avoid looking at Ava. By the way, Ava is Maya's apprentice. She was at one point a thief, and she's also kind of annoying. Behind the wall, I realized I still can't inspect these artifacts. Found a piece of the vault key, and got the 411 on Ava. The real reason I took Ava on as an apprentice? She's going to be a siren, someday. And I want to make sure she's ready when that happens. For those keeping count, this means that we are currently at six sirens. Oh, wait, no, Lilith lost her power. So we're still at five sirens. I think we're at five sirens. I'm having trouble keeping track of how many sirens there are right now. I climbed very high to turn off the radio broadcast tower, and then majestically Mario hopped down so I could get to another Typhon dead drop. A quick inspection of my trinket collection, and it was back to Sanctuary for me. While Ava might have seemed annoying at the start, I realized that I could pet her small animal. This was terrific. All is forgiven. When you took on the bully mongs and Captain Flint and the stairs? I make Maya tell me about it all the time. Then I realized she was exceedingly happy to meet Claptrap, and her judgment was in question yet again. Tannis was so excited to get a piece of the vault key that she busted out these sweet new dance moves. Look out flossing. Well, one fragment down, two more to go. I talked to the Siren Squad, still not superior to the Squirtle Squad, in my opinion and hit level 19. Reese, in a mad dash to get off that pedestal I had put him on, explained that he actually knew exactly where one of the pieces of the vault key was this entire time. Oh, 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 and, uh, and Zero reports the lasers being powered by a vault key fragment, so, uh... All I needed to hear, we're on it. Citing an absolute lack in judgment, I decided to do a mission for a child. Yeah. This would be my downfall. I've got a job I could totally do, but I don't want to. You want to, right? So, before moving on to space lasers, it was back to Athenus. Hammerlock had me destroy a chupacabra -ach. I know it's funny, right? Because it's like a chupacabra, but ratch. You can put ratch into anything and make it work, except maybe a burger. Wait, what was that? Oh, that's what they used for the burgers? Right, forgot about that story point. Those burgers are made with ratch, folks. Soylent ratch. See, works with everything. Ava's very important quest revolved around getting back many of her personal possessions. 
most notably a diary that was stolen by this Darwin Award winner, and I got rewarded with a fancy chest. And my inventory's full again. One of the guns I was able to loot from that chest was called the Boo Plus, and this would become my new favorite thing. I can launch spider bots on the ground and on walls, and then they just explode into enemies when they run out of ammo. I would in no way exploit this. Finally, I met Reese in person. He was having a bad day. Quick question, is that mustache authorized? Focus! Short answer, no. I made bank at the Goshapon machines and hijacked a Malawan shuttle. And so we were off to spies so that we can go to Skywell 27. It has a giant laser on it, which I'm sure is used only for good. Boots on the ground, Reese. Oh, that actually worked? Uh, I mean, of course that worked. <laughs> and, uh, and no death spheres in sight. Uh, death spheres? I surprised Reese by not being dead and realized I never asked for that autograph. They say in space, no one can hear you scream. They better tell this guy. There are a great number of things that the troops in Malawan may be angry at me for, but the thing that seemed to really annoy them was that I wanted to use an elevator, because they sent out an entire armada to try and stop me from doing that. And yes, I was still using my butt stallion bombs at this point. I don't really know how rainbows work in space, but I'm not like a scientist or something. However, now at level 20, it's probably good to look at the skills that I've picked. Now on the fourth level down in the Demolition Woman tech tree, I am able to max out the why can't I hold all these grenades skill, which just gives me extra grenades. And that's kind of important for Moe's just because she gets so many bonuses for splash damage. And then I saw it, the giant space laser. It was beautiful and terrifying. And also, don't stand too close to it, oh no. I picked my moment, waited for the laser to fire, and then made a mad dash into the interior. Because there must be something cool there, right? And there was, there was a chest with a bunch of green items in it. Kind of anticlimactic. Then somehow the laser killed me. I then proceeded to feel like an idiot because the mission was actually to just disable the laser, which I could have done if I just went a little further past it. And oh, it's way easier to get in there now. Good to know. Somehow I had come across a shotgun that also was sort of a sniper rifle and also became a Merv when I threw it. I was not complaining. Reese told me to jump into a hole, and I stupidly did. Hey, you know those murder spheres that he mentioned when we first touched down? Here they are. Reese insisted on having his own murder sphere, except that he needed to choose the one that was less murdery and more touchy feely. Call me Reese Ball. Ball scan complete. That does not sound right. This way to the control room. Somehow, without even trying, I ran across a handsome Jackie. She was wearing a handsome Jack face mask, which made it very shootable. And this would not have been a big problem if she didn't have a bot that constantly regenerated her shields. She had me on the ground, but then I got a brilliant idea and threw out my boo several times. She never stood a chance. Unbeknownst to me, this was actually a target of opportunity and she dropped a legendary assault rifle, which I honestly didn't use very much. Not to be outdone by Reese, Katagawa proved that he had an even bigger ball. And this would be our next boss fight. Katagawa Ball had an interesting feature that gave him a level of armor over two levels of shield. But I had a plan. Jump in a giant mech to take out his armor. Then throw out lots of booze to quickly take down his shield. This worked pretty well, and I finally hit level 20. Nope, nope, didn't hit level 21 yet. Uh, but I did get a whole lot of great green drops. Katagawa Ball sucks. 
Luckily, a Daredevil-style hallway battle was in my future, and in a flood of rainbows and walking turrets, I was able to get to level 21. What will happen when we get our head out of the stars? Oh, probably have to do with ninjas. Yeah, probably ninjas in our future.